Brown said once, it's better to be ready and not have an opportunity than to have an opportunity and not be ready. Mr. Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters, and welcome guests. In this room, how many of you love the sales call? The call, call. Let me see your hands. One, two, three, four. And how many of you just hate it completely? Okay. And how many of you are not here today? I have very few. Okay. Fair enough. In my presentation, I will share with you a few of the experiences that I have in this beautiful profession of sales. I will also tell you a few tips that might help you to maybe change your perspective about cold call. And at the very end, I am going to ask a volunteer to help me demonstrate somehow how to handle objections and how to become a better salesperson, professional salesperson, to handle the cold call. Long time ago, in Mexico, because my dad had an accident when I was 15 days old, he was not able to work. But we have a great family with big needs and very short resources. At nine years old, my grandfather had a field, a field, planted some alfalfa. And at that point, we saw an opportunity to make little punch, mediums, and bigger, and sell it to our family, our friends, and to anybody who might be interested in buying it. And to tell you the truth, I remember, I was really scared, really afraid that my friends at school would make fun of me. And I had to somehow overcome because of the need we have to survive. And I remember at that time, I was thinking, if I could only find the best product to sell, then I think I would be rich. After I went to high school, then I went to university, and then for some reason, I'm not gonna make an excuse. I had to drop school. Then I was about 22. I was the oldest in the family, the huge family. And I had nothing to show and no plans to do anything. At that point, I knew I had to do something great. And I remember I went to search a classified in the local newspaper that, believe it or not, is still running today. It's called El Sol de Puebla. I found one ad saying, we need people who invest in a business, make money very quick, and great opportunity. So I saw that on Monday, didn't pay attention to that, but I saw that every single day through Friday. So I said, maybe there is something on that ad that I need to pay attention. Pick up the phone, I called, and they said, if you are interested, you can make an appointment. So I went for the interview, and something interesting. I saw a lot of people running like crazy in that place, and talking to people, and people on the phone. Well, it happened to be one of those companies, such as Medicare, Jafra, and other companies that advertise, or I, I must say, rather, want you to sell their product. And there is nothing wrong with that. But I did. Instead, I invested a lot of my money, I should say the money I didn't have, to buy as much product as possible, and I was very successful at my first sold. And that was because I sold my sisters, and my aunts, and my neighbors, and everybody, what I just had invested in. 
And then at that point, I thought again, if I just have something else better to sell, I think I'll be rich. I think I'll be in better shape. Then, somebody says, the United States of America is the land of opportunity. I didn't want to believe it, but it seemed like everybody who was going from the United States to my old country, I mean, to my old town, seemed very happy, very excited about it. I couldn't help it. So I decided to try it. Then I came in, and I found a job. And I had to do something to survive. There was another opportunity that I came in, and that was to sell ice cream in an ice cream truck. I had to tell you, it was not the best job. But again, I thought, if I just find the best product to sell, I think I'll be in better shape. <clears throat> then another friend said, you know what, I think we should do something about it. I think if we can just sell pillows and sell them on the street, maybe that will work better. Well, I tried that as well. And then, in the city of Elmonte, the sheriff stopped me and said, you cannot do that here. And that was the end of that business. Then, I traded my time for money. That means I found a job. I was working 40 hours, 50, and I got a salary. And I was okay because I didn't have to worry about anything. It was a problem. It was one cent salary and I couldn't do anything other than just get that. I was selling. I was not happy with that. Then the opportunity came to sell cars. And I thought, well, I don't think that's going to be the right thing for me to do. But I had a need to do. I had a lot of necessity to just try something better. And I tried that as well. And I did okay. But I, then I thought, if I cannot find something else better to sell, I think I'd be in better shape. And then <clears throat> the mortgage and the real estate boom came. And I said, if I could only learn how to sell real estate loans, maybe I can be in better shape. And again, I join the real estate and the loan industry. And I thought it was good. But after all those things, I realized that it, there is nothing really most difficult or easier to sell than the person you face every single morning at the mirror. I realized that throughout all these professions, if you will, it's not the product that is actually selling the most important thing. It's us, it's you, it's I, what people buy. And I'm here to share with you that the first person we need to persuade to purchase our product is ourselves. If we persuade ourselves that we have the capabilities to persuade others to sell, we are halfway through. I am going to share with you some of the techniques I believe have helped me to conquer the goal goal. When I was selling cars, I remember there were a lot of challenges. People coming, people who you never heard about them, and just walk into your store your new car life, new car life, and wanted to take a piece of you. And you have to have the skills to make that people comfortable with you and also find their needs and help them. So the first step, like I already mentioned, is have confidence in yourself. The second is never take no for an answer. Always keep trying. Always try to be persistent. The second is to build report. People are not gonna do business with us unless they feel comfortable, unless they know that we care about their needs. And that can be built very easy. Maybe talking about the weather, maybe talking about a movie, maybe talking about the news, maybe talking about anything. 
once we build rapport, we, we have to focus on the customer needs. What is what they want that we can help to solve? The first impression is also very important. Unfortunately, we don't have a second chance for the second impression. People who never meet us before will just take whatever they see first. And unfortunately, if our package, our, the way we present ourselves is what is going to remain in the mind of our prospects. Once you have <coughs> report with your, with your prospect, with your client, once you know their needs, then it's time to do, to do your presentation, to make your case, to present what, what is it that you offer that are going to help them to resolve their needs. And do it with passion, do it with motivation. One thing I'm gonna tell you, when I started in, the, in, the, in this profession of sales, my English is not really good now, it was even worse before. So one thing I did, I had a lot of passion, I had a lot of tenacity, and I show a lot of respect and a lot of humility to people. I said, I don't, I might know anything about those vehicles, but I can assure you one thing, I'm going to work twice harder to help you find what you're looking for. And people sometimes look at me, smile, and they understood my intentions, that I was sincere, and they just went with the flow. Once you present your product, whatever you're trying to sell, you might get objections, and this is what I'm trying to, to say, that we need to be prepared to handle any type of objections. Now, in our case, we have to do a test drive, but whatever is it that you are offering, you have to be willing to do a test drive. In other words, how are we gonna do a test drive? Sometimes in the field of real estate, what I tell my clients sometimes is, you can try me, you can test drive me for free. Try my service, see if you like it. See if what I do is something that fits into your needs, and then we'll take it from there. Do we have a minute? A um, minute and a half till Ren. Okay, perfect. Now, very quick, I'm gonna ask Alan, he just came into my use car lot, or to my new car lot. How are you doing, Alec? Good. Okay, great, good to see you. Wow, that's a nice uh, leather jacket. How would you like the weather? Uh, it's nice today, it's nice and cool. Fantastic. Let me ask you this, are you looking for a, a, a sedan or a truck or a minivan? Uh, a small gas efficient car. Oh, absolutely, great. So, do you need this for work or do you need this? No, just to drive around town. Oh, fantastic, that's great. <clears throat> Would you be interested in financing or are you paying cash? Financing. Awesome. I think I have the right card for you. Are you looking for automatic or? Automatic. Yes. Automatic, great, great, okay. Have you heard about electric hybrid cars? Yes, fantastic. That's when I'm interested, hybrids. Fantastic, I think I just found the right card for you. Follow me. <clears throat> this is the new 2011 Prius. Oh, I think you're gonna like it. Now this one, just look. Oh, absolutely, no worries about it. Absolutely, you don't charge for this, you know, don't worry about it. Okay, let's take it for a drive. Now, let me ask you this. Is the mirror in uh, your seat, you feel comfortable in it? Yes. Okay, fantastic, great. Okay, so let's go for a ride. Right. It's kind of tight, this one. Oh, okay, well, you, okay, you can adjust it, by the way. No, it's just, oh, it's okay. I can't adjust that. Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, I guess the Japanese need to read the sign. <laughs> okay, wait, no problem. So, let me ask you this. Do you like the feeling of the car, the smelling of the new car? Yes. Okay, great. Well, this car will help you to get about 56 to 60 miles on the street in about 35 on the highway. Will that be something nice? Yeah, you? that's what I'm looking for. Perfect. Well, let's get inside. Right. Let me show you the numbers. And I... And I, I'm sure you will take it. You will want to take it home. All right. Great. Right.
45 seconds. <laughs>